The Redmi K20 Pro has been an attention grabber from the day it was announced and no doubt it is the most popular smartphone in its price category. In some regions, it also goes by the name Mi 90, so don't get confused, it's the same smartphone basically. And I have been using the K20 Pro for around two months now, side by side with other phones that I have reviewed, and I think now I've used it enough to give you guys a long-term review of it, so let's get started. Design-wise, it's still one of the most attractive and I would say different designs. The glass body does not lack the heft and premiumness and hence the phone feels very good on the hands. Now the glass body has its cons, smudges are unavoidable and if you don't case off your phone, it will look something like this. Talking of cases, the case Xiaomi provides inside the box looks very good and has endured my use for almost 2 months and it still looks good for some time more. The one thing I appreciate is that the power button is in a different distinct red color that has given the device a very nice touch. However, the buttons are not very tactile to my liking. They're not bad, but they don't give that good clicky feedback when compared to high-end phones like the Note 10 Plus. At the back, there's a lot going on. First, there's the triple camera setup and down below, we have the Redmi branding. There's a speaker down below, which by the way is the only speaker here, meaning this one does not have stereo speakers like the former flagship killer, the Pocophone F1, which I think is a bummer. Besides that, you see the USB-C port and a SIM slot. Notably, the phone does not miss out on the headphone jack, which I am very thankful for. Overall, I'd like to point out that the design is not very premium like that of high-end phones, but whatever cons I may list out, this is one of the best designs for the price and I love it. The Redmi K20 Pro has a 6.39 inches Horizon AMOLED display. Now, don't get all confused, Horizon is just a name given by Xiaomi, it's your regular AMOLED display like you find in any other smartphone. But one of the perks of having an AMOLED screen is the presence of dark mode, which I use on a daily basis because why not? It saves battery and it protects your eyes. And talking about protecting your eyes, there's an anti-flicker mode in the display which really does help reduce the effects of PWM dimming. Now, in case you don't know what that means, you can check out what it is and what it does from here. But notably, even though the screen is bare 6.39 inches, the display looks quite big and full, all thanks to the pop-up camera and narrow bezels. About the quality, well, it's superb. The colors are good, viewing angles are good, brightness levels are good. So if you are thinking to get the K20 Pro, be sure that you will get an amazing display experience. On top of that, there's no notch to eat up extra space in the display. And undoubtedly, the display is one of the many things the company has upgraded from the Pocophone F1, so I am very happy about that. And what else? Yes, the display is protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 5, which has been a savior because even though I've not used a screen protector, the display has only gone through minor scratches and nothing that requires a lot of attention. However, it would have been better if Xiaomi could have included the latest generation of Gorilla Glass protection. Xiaomi's flagship killers have always opted for the latest and the fastest chipsets there are, which is also the reason why they are called flagship killers in the first place. So with the Snapdragon 855, everything just flows. There is almost nothing this phone can't handle. Currently, I'm also using the Note 10 Plus and both perform in a similar fashion, though the Note 10 Plus will cost you nearly double. So this is hands down the best performing phone for the price. Gaming-wise too, you get the best from Qualcomm, the Adreno 640, which handles games like a breeze. The phone does not heat to a level of frustration even while intense gaming. Xiaomi says that they have used double-layer cooling technology surrounding the chipset to prevent heating, so I guess that has worked. You only get the 8GB RAM and 256GB storage variant here in Nepal, but there are other variants available in other regions. However, there is no SD card slot for further storage expansion, so make sure you choose the right variant. The Redmi K20 Pro runs on Android Pie currently, although you can download Android 10 for better testing. The MIUI 10.3 is what the phone runs on currently, so apart from a few changes here and there, you are going to get a typical MIUI experience. 
You get the Poco Launcher 2.0 by default and there is an app drawer as well, but you can keep it or discard it, you have a choice for that. But the good thing is, even though MIUI 10 is pretty heavy, it's well optimized in the K20 Pro, so it does not slow down or bring lags to the device. The transitions in the UI are pretty smooth too. As I already mentioned, there are welcome features in the UI like a dark mode and always on display. For always on display, you can put it on all the time or schedule it, but keeping it on all the time is going to chug your battery a little bit. However, I'm not a very big fan of MIUI because of those annoying ads, but Xiaomi is not sending any ads in here. However, you never know with Xiaomi. Also, the MIUI icons is something I am not very fond of, so the first thing I did was install Samsung One UI icon pack. For security, you have the basics, an in-display fingerprint sensor which is blazing fast, not as fast as the OnePlus 7 Pro but still fast. In my region, you get face unlock option 2 which uses the pop-up selfie camera and is not very fast. Now let's talk cameras and what I can say is that the K20 Pro may be a flagship killer when it comes to performance but with the time I had with it, it surely is not a flagship great camera performer. I will explain why, but first let's get down with the camera specs. There are triple cameras at the back, a primary 48 megapixel quad Bayer sensor, a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, and an 8 megapixel 2x telephoto lens. Photos from the primary sensor in daylight condition look really nice. They are detailed and punchy, but sometimes you do get some oversaturation going on, like in this picture here. Also, you do have an AI option if you want to add saturation to your images and sometimes it does look good like this picture here. Portraits in the K20 Pro are done via the telephoto lens. And I must say subject focus is done very well here. S detection though takes a hit at difficult areas like the hair, but overall I've liked the portraits from the K20 Pro. Although when the background is sunny, it looks exposed. Blur at the background can be adjusted afterwards according to one's liking, so things look good. Also, there is a feature here which lets you make some moving background effects, which is fun to have. I did compare K20 Pro's primary camera with the Note 10 Plus that I recently reviewed and I must say there is no competition. The Note 10 Plus is simply better in every aspect from colors to dynamic range to bokeh in portraits and this is what you get with flagship phones and not with the flagship killers like the K20 Pro. The second telephoto lens does a good job too, although you won't find great detailing like the primary camera. The third ultra wide angle lens also preserves fair details and produces good colors. The sensor is 15mm wide so you get quite wide pictures. But all the three sensors are not optically stabilized, meaning there's no OIS. So if you don't have steady hands, chances are your images might come out slightly wobbly or shaky, especially during low light scenarios. And the normal nighttime images are grainy and void of details. However, there is a night mode feature to compensate for it, which improves the details and exposure of the images by a good margin. Again, because of the lack of OIS, nighttime images may result in being shaky many times. Video-wise, the K20 Pro is very impressive to say at the least. You have various options while video recording, where I found the 4K at 30fps to have the best stabilization. You can record videos at 4K 60fps too, but they are not very well stabilized. As far as the quality goes, it's very good. If you are thinking of making vlogs and you don't want to invest a lot in equipment, the K20 Pro can be a good option. You can also record slow motion videos at night 60 FPS and 120 FPS. The quality, well, it's not good, but interestingly, you can add music to them, which is sort of fun. You can click videos from the wide angle and telephoto lens as well. Here are some samples for you to check out. For selfies, we have this 20 megapixel snapper uh, and the images, well, are not that great. It does not have the most natural skin color and as you can see, it's got this red tint going all over which I'm not really a fan of. Um, having said that, the details look very good, the background is also looking very good and yeah, overall it looks okay, it's not the best one out there, I guess. So I've also taken some samples from this one, so do check it out.
As I said in the beginning, the cameras are justifiable for the price but not quite on par with flagships and I think the software implementation could have been a little better. It is the same sensor, the Sony IMX586, which is found on even budget smartphones these days. So I don't think it is a flagship killer camera on the K20 Pro. Now, it has become like a ritual to Xiaomi to keep 4000 mAh batteries in their smartphones and this one follows the same tradition. The battery on the Redmi K20 Pro is supported by 27W fast charging and you get the 18W fast charger inside the box. The phone took me 1 hour and 30 minutes to get fully charged and a fully charged battery can last you for a good one and a half day. I was quite impressed by the battery life of the K20 Pro because even though it has a regular size battery, the battery is very enduring and I really liked how it shuts down the background processes properly to give you an enduring battery life. Now before I come to conclusion, here are some of the compromises you have to bear with the K20 Pro when compared with $1000 flagships. The first is not having dust and water resistance. There is also no stereo speakers and the output from the mono speakers is well above average. The K20 Pro also has mediocre vibration motors, which they should surely improve on its next iteration. And the final compromise is the cameras. The Sony IMX586 sensor is not a flagship sensor as advertised by Xiaomi because, well, even the budget phones are using the same sensor. Yes, I know it depends upon the software optimization and the chipset too and not just the sensor, but well, the optimization in the K20 Pro is not wow. So just ignore the compromises that I mentioned earlier, I was just nitpicking because if you look at the price, the Redmi K20 Pro is the best value for money you can buy in that price range. For performance, it can be compared to the flagships and no other mid-rangers can compete with the K20 Pro in this regard. Design and display are well what you get for the price and as I said, cameras are good enough but not the best. And here in Nepal, it is priced at 50,000 rupees whereas its closest competitor is the OnePlus 7 which is priced at 65,000 rupees. So the Redmi K20 Pro is an unrivaled choice. So that was our review of the Redmi K20 Pro. Do let us know what you think about the device in the comment section below. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and thank you for watching.